How you doing friends? It's me, Jeff Lovelin of Faithful United. Today we are here with Brian Conklin of Fellowship of Christian Athletes here in Omaha, Nebraska. How you doing, Brian? Doing really well today. Good, good. So we're here on the basketball court. This is uh, what you used to uh, eat, breathe, sleep back in the day in college and high school days. And how are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing good. You know, before it's got turned on, Jeff asked if I if I had any desire of these guys playing basketball just right down there behind us. Mm -hmm. I do have a desire to go play, but then I said all I can picture is blowing out Achilles tendon. So that seems like a long time ago. Right. That run around with those guys. Before we started this episode too, uh, we we're just coordinating. All right, I'm on this basketball court in this location, and there was just one rain cloud in the okay. metro, and I happened to find it. Yeah. So it's good work. I yeah. Hear thunder behind yeah. Us, <laughs> So this would be a good episode. We started to get the start. Uh, God blessed us with a little rain. Now we're we're here sharing about FCA. Uh, Brian, you just want to share a little bit about yourself and how God's moved in your life and, and even just got you to the point where you're at now. Yeah, you know, uh, just you know, like anybody, God God gives everyone a story. Mm -hmm. My story is uh, not as flashy as some, mm -hmm. you know, but it's but it's a miracle nonetheless because God is the, the word move is a really good word. Moved. Yeah, because yeah. God has yeah. has moved me from a place of being an enemy of God oh, to a place yeah. of being uh, right with God through Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, some some people have testimonies where you know that happens in a very dramatic way. Yeah. Might yeah. happen uh, through faithful parents at home when I was a, a wow. young boy sure. hearing the gospel yeah. and uh, putting my trust in Christ. But um, I'm, I'm grateful that God got me early, saved me early. Right. And it's definitely has had me on a on a roller coaster of a life, you know. I, yeah. I grew up in Youngstown, Ohio, and uh, had moved out here to Nebraska to, to play basketball at the University of Nebraska. Uh, met an Omaha girl. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, so what, what's going on in my life is, <laughs> is we have three little kids and are basically chasing them around, sporting <laughs> events and activities, and yes. just, just enjoying life there. Um, I 100% understand the chasing around part. My daughter is almost two years old now, and this girl is just, I knew, when she was in the womb, I'm like, she's just gonna come out running. Like, there's yeah. always energy all the time. And what a blessing kids are, too. Yeah. You know, we, we found um, seasons, you know, like mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a sports guy, so I, I very easily think in seasons. And mm -hmm. it's amazing when, when right. they're born, they come out, and it's kind of a shock shock to your world. Yeah, right. You know, yeah. all of a sudden, your, your, your uh, calendar is no longer yours. You're, right. You're, every hour of the day is eaten up by this little thing. Yeah, and yep. uh, you know it's it's an amazing, mm -hmm. joyful experience at that age, and we we feel like in our family our kids are getting to a new season mm -hmm. uh, with with different experiences and activities going on, but nonetheless God God's been teaching us so much through Absolutely. that, and it's a, a blessing. Um, I've been learning as a parent too that uh, God is uh, will teach me so much through my daughter, uh, just the way she gets knocked down and tries to learn how to walk and then all of a sudden she's all of a sudden just walking but it took a lot of effort you know and a lot of attempts yeah. and a lot of tries and and then there she is just sprinting everywhere yeah. <laughs> but uh it just he teaches me so many lessons through my daughter it's amazing yeah. you know you know those little people uh, they just end up almost being a mirror mm -hmm. you know it, it, it really what i find is it exposes me as a human <laughs> being you see your own sin because you look at your kids and you know, if they're disobeying or acting up in a way, you're going, how, how in the world at that young of an age are they doing something right, like right, that? Right. And then you start to evaluate what's going on, and, and you're going, you know, they probably learned that from me as their yep. dad. Yep. And uh, it's like this constant little gospel reminder that's, mm -hmm. that's you know, maybe terrorizing your house, <laughs> but uh, God is very, very faithful in allowing those things to happen. Right. There. I asked for uh, happy, healthy, and strong, and he gave me strong will, and that's all right. He yeah. answered my prayer. He answered your prayer. Sure. Got what you asked for. <laughs> so, being a former uh, Husker, I have to admit, um, sometimes you have to bring things to light. Uh, I'm from Ralston. This is my stomping grounds, if you will. But, uh, I, but uh, I am a J Skirt, yeah. so I'm a, a Creighton fan and a Husker fan, and I'm one of those guys. So, <laughs> so I think this is a great place to stop the interview. Man. Right, right. He's I'm out. Gonna, I'm gonna go get in my car and go home. No, I. So, uh, you know, when I came to to Nebraska from Ohio, yeah. 
you know, it, it took me a while, honestly, to learn about this this rivalry that, mm-hmm. that is Creighton basketball and Nebraska <laughs> basketball. Honestly, I didn't I didn't really understand it. You yeah. know, when I came to Nebraska, I thought, well, I can't wait to play against teams like Kansas, <laughs> right, or Oklahoma, yeah. or Texas. And you know, somewhere in the pre the, the pre conference <laughs> schedule, there's this little school called Creighton. You're right. Yeah. And uh, you know, I, I learned my lesson quick that 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 is not a game to overlook. You know? <laughs> right. So in my career. I think I was one in uh, one in five against really? Creighton. Wow! They they had a guy named Kyle Corver. Oh yeah. They have a guy that I actually work with now, Ryan Sears. Yep. Yep. Uh, and they were just just flat out better than us. So <laughs> now now that I'm kind of beyond those my college years and I live in Omaha, I'm, I'm understanding the, the power of Creighton and I'm understanding right. the, the, the Jasker. I still think you get it wrong. <laughs> you're, you're rooting for the wrong team, yeah. but I, I, they're I, they're rootable for. I got to root for the Huskers. I'm an alumni from yeah. there, so I had to go for them for the victory. But yeah. the rest of the season, yeah. I cheer for. Okay, oh, yeah. so, okay. That, that's, that's it. right. So it's a win-win, right? Yeah. But um, what is one of your favorite moments of college ball, and how can you apply that to how God has impacted your life through basketball? Yeah. Well. You know, you think about college basketball, like, like there's so many games. Like, yeah, I, if I re- really sat and reflect on my career there, there's so many games, there's so many practices. And, you know, you've heard this said before, but um, I think I think less about the games. And I think less about the plays. There, There's uh, very memorable plays and games, obviously. But but honestly, what it came down to, my, my college career, the most memorable things came down to people. Mm-hmm. You know, right. uh, you know, primarily right. teammates at that time who, you know, you, you know, God kind of assembles this team from literally all over the world because we had some international players on that team, mm-hmm. and you know, you don't know, you go from not knowing each other to, to having a real genuine love wow. of one another. Right. And you know, I think that has really taught me so much about life because it, you know we just got done talking about family, yep. talk about basketball. You can talk about anything, right? And really, what it goes back to is it goes back to relationships. Mm-hmm. And um, so I, I'm I'm grateful for Husker basketball because it gave a lot of relationships that still exist today. Absolutely. Um, and a, and a lot of lessons. Yeah. Certainly, you know, in those relationships, it, uh, maybe Coach Coach K may have written a book like this, but I may have this wrong. But uh, a season is a life, something like that, where okay. you know you go through things with these people, and you have the highest of highs, and you have the lowest of lows. Right. Uh, there's even, you know, in my career, we even had teammates that you, you experienced personal tragedies with, you know, where right. they had lost loved ones, and it, it's amazing that sports set that up. Right. You know, to, to be able to just to connect with people in a way that's pretty unique. As you were talking, I was thinking of my senior year of high school. I would, uh, from freshman year, junior year, you know, you just go to the practices and you're just like, I'm just a part of this team, you know. But that senior year, when you realize there's coming an end of the season yeah. at some point in time, you work a little harder. You, you gel a little more and and you put everything all out for that season you want to leave a lasting impact and really that's what i want to do through faithful united and and whatever i do every day now is i don't know when my season in life ends but i want that impact to stay and i want that to impact others and so running those sprints i enjoyed those especially senior year you know i mean I, I I took a different view of it. I realized I'm getting in shape. Uh, enjoy this. You're work, learning a work ethic and all these other things. Yeah. And eventually it comes to an end. Yeah. And then you have to just be on the court with these guys and try not to tear your Achilles. <laughs> but uh, it's it is those seasons. I love that. Yeah, it, and it is. It's uh, it's like anything. You know, it, good things can become uh, too good at times. You know, you know like and I've always found that that was a balance. How do you make the most out of every second of these opportunities? Um, and most of the relationships, the, the most of your effort, if it's running a sprint or if it's uh, even just your tenderness and a huddle, whatever right. it is. But then uh, also keeping it in perspective that that God God has given sport as a gift. Right. Um, and, and like anything, if it's family, if it's if it's sports, you know, it's so easily can turn to 
idolatry almost. Right. Oh, absolutely. Where yeah. that day, you know, when yeah. that you run that final sprint or mm -hmm. the, the horn goes off for the final time and you're sitting there going, I'm left with nothing, it, it really can expose your heart. And going, yeah. Man, where, where was I putting my trust and my hope and my joy in? And it's, it's easy to, to cross the line and go too far with it. Yep. Even. So. In, in high school, I was basketball was everything, you know, and then I put my identity in that. Yeah. And that's what I love about FCA is you you teach them about Christ and being an ident your identity is in Christ. Yeah. And but you get to enjoy sports and you get to be involved in your in your school and your community. And uh, with that, you just want to share a little bit about what FCA is, the yeah. vision, and yeah. um, kind of the mission behind that. Yeah. Well, I know you guys can't really see what's going on behind us, but again, a basketball game, and mm -hmm. there there is just something to sport. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. even just uh, walking in here. Uh, it, it's very easy with the commonality of a ball bounces up on the ground. There's a hoop over there. It's very easy to, to just strike up relationships, right? And strike up conversation. And you know, it, it's just one of those things that culturally God has set up that we feel like can be a, an extremely great platform, right? To, right. To proclaim the name of Jesus Christ. You know, so really, um, if you boil down what is FCA and, and what is it that we're trying to do as a ministry, we just really believe that. Uh, you know, and it's, it's not hard to, to understand this, but you look around the communities, you look around the schools, you quickly understand that, that God has been disinvited from the schools and the right. community. Right. And, and because of that, you, you've got a whole culture, especially the youth today, that, that are in some, some real trouble. You know, as, as FCA, if you, if you try to keep it real simple, you know, we, we want to be able to, to help coaches lead their athletes to Christ, which means right. we want to be able to engage the coach. Yep. Uh, coaches today are, are some of the most influential people in, in all of culture. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some powerful uh, truth to the words coach says. Right. You know, coach right. says run through a wall, You're kids right. run through a wall. Absolutely. You know, when that coach can use their influence to, to point kids to Christ, that, that's yes. a powerful tool. So we want to we want to engage those, those those difference makers. We want to equip them to be what we call coaches for Christ. So for them to be able to walk in those halls and on those courts and on those fields, track, mm -hmm. uh, wherever God has them, and, and really see that as a mission field. Amen. And and then we, we really you know want to be able to, to hold those coaches up and support them and empower them in such a way where um, they they know how to utilize the tool of FCA right. uh, to be able to make the most of their influence to get the gospel going forward. I was thinking even in high school and middle school, and um, it's important just to have that, um, planting that seed from the very early age. Um, when you graduate high school and you go out into the world, you, you discover some other things. But when you can just uh, right away let people know about Jesus and, and um, you know, uh, having a biblical life that uh, glorifies God and well, that changes things when you discover the world. You realize what you should and should not do, and yeah. or if you go down a path, you realize I can find my way back with Christ. Yeah, yeah. And it's and that's what we see as sports. You know, mm -hmm. it's it, it's it's like like how Christ taught. Mm -hmm. You know, if you if you go through the scriptures, uh, Jesus taught in parables. Right. And in those parables, really, what he was doing is he was looking around at culture and going, "What is familiar in culture today?" Right. If it was farming, uh, if it was war, uh, even athletics at that time, he would he would find those things that people were living and experiencing and, and you didn't really have to teach them about. Right. But he would take those things to help them understand something that they didn't really know. Mm -hmm. You know, and so that's really, you know, the, the power of sport. We're trying to take that almost a modern day parable of sport. Right. Yeah. Where we can go, you know, there's there's power too when a kid has a ball under their arm, being able to sit down and going, Hey, this just happened in the game and this this reminds us of this. You know, and being being able to be skilled and right. And, and helping these kids and, and the families that are attached with them, the fan base, whatever it is, helping them understand that there's something greater and that's Christ. Mm -hmm. But but really, you know, taking hold of that sport and utilizing it there. You know, a lot of times when you come to an, uh, a court like this, you'll see kids just pick up the ball and start launching half court shots and things, and and they don't hit the goal. You know, and and I think a lot of times we try to do that as well. We're like, well, I'm just gonna just give it a shot. All right, God, what what is this? You know, I'm just gonna pick a passage. You know, and and then something doesn't quite match up. You're like, well, that didn't work. You yeah. set it aside. 
but those guys that started today, you know, they just kind of warmed up close to the hoop and started practicing on some shots and the mechanics, and and then now they're probably finding their shot by now, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard uh, I've heard the net uh, swish a few times. Yeah. <laughs> Although they got a they got the dreaded double round. Oh, I know, I know. And, and if a ball that. hits that, it's forget about it. So. <laughs> But we can do that in our life too, you know. Um, don't put that Bible aside. Keep picking it up in the morning, in the afternoon, and at night. You know, just keep getting your mechanics down, and uh, it will change your life. It really will. Yeah, you know, the Word of God is amazing. It's it's, it's referred to as a double-edged sword. You know, it's, it's that powerful where it, it really cuts our hearts down and really helps us understand what the truth is. Right. And, and uh, you know, your your analogy there of just kind of coming in and firing away. You think about the Christian life. It's really contrary to everything else. Be, because when, when you think about, especially living in Nebraska, uh, a very moral state, uh, very hardworking type of people that live here, I think one of the easiest things to do, and we see this in the athletic field a lot, is you know you stay in the gym a little bit more, and you put a little more effort in, and a few more reps, and you outwork people, and you get good, good things happen. Right. You know, but but really what we're trying to point people to, and this is what what God's Word points people to, is is you can mechanically work on your game mm -hmm. in the game of life. You right. can you right. can work on all these things, and yep. you can try your best to obey every every law that that is out there. Um, the Ten Commandments, but the reality is, is you're just going to fall short, right? You yep. know, and, and yep. that's just the beauty of being able to go into these contexts of, you know, athletic arenas where people understand hard work, and if, if you do a little bit more, you're you're going to earn more playing time or right. have more success, and be able to share good news with them. Right. And, and yeah. you can try all you want. Yeah. In this game of life, and, and you can you can try. Uh, until you're blue in the face, but the reality is, is every one of us is going to miss the mark. Mm -hmm. Every one of us is going to throw bricks up yep. at these hoops, yep. you know, every, every single air day. Ball. <laughs> yeah, and, I've and, heard that a couple yeah, times. It, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I am too. Actually, the, the more I play later in life, the more I hear that because air balls are plentiful. But, right, right. But there's just a reality that, um, man, it's such good news that right. in the midst of being sinners, God loved us so much mm -hmm. that He sent His Son Christ to to be that righteousness for us. Amen. And that's it's just good news. So. Um, with that, what would you say is one of the biggest challenges uh, either you or FCA face uh, just going into the schools, getting to know coaches and athletes, and mm -hmm. what's the biggest challenge you face right now? Yeah, you know, so as we're trying to connect with those difference makers, those coaches. Mm -hmm. The role of a coach in culture today is difficult. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. it's it's. Uh, they they say there's two types of coaches: one that has been fired, yeah. and one that's about ready to be fired. Yeah. You know, so as as you're thinking about what all that means, I mean, coaches sometimes can be very guarded people. Yeah. Um, they have a hard time trusting people, and rightfully so, because many people are are after their jobs. Mm -hmm. They're after more playing time for their yeah. kids. It's it's very seldom that. You know, a coach gets a pat on the back right. and says, great job. Right. You know, so yeah. part of it is just um, learning what it is as a ministry to walk yeah. alongside yeah, these coaches and support them, um, to be able to bring good news to them and minister the gospel to them first before we ever minister yeah, yeah, yeah. through them. So that's that's yeah. that's the challenge. Is, you know, You're building them up and their families. And right. They're that point of impact in the community where uh, people identify them. Yeah. Yeah, everyone you know. knows coach so-and-so, mm -hmm. you know, there's there's just that reality, but the, the family aspect, it, again, I, I remember a story one time, there was a, a coach at a local high school, I won't say what school he is. Sure, um, thank you, thank you. Yeah, but I, I, I went into uh, the gym during the summer, yeah. and they were just having a summer workout, and, you know, I casually just went in there to say hi to the coach, and I said, coach, how you doing today? And he looked at me and he just kind of put his head down and he goes, it's been a tough day. And, and he went on to um, point to the court where his players were, were playing out there. And he, and he pointed to one kid in particular and he said, uh, that's the one kid whose dad is not in jail on the entire team. Wow. And, and he yeah. went on to tell me that the day before wow. their starting point guard had been shot and killed. Oh. And, and as he's talking about this very heavy situation, wow. I'm, I'm noticing in the background, just like this, we're on the court, yeah. we're talking, and in the background there's these three little blonde haired girls, his, his little girls. Mm -hmm. And, and he looked at them and he looked at his players and he just he just made the comment, he goes, I just, I don't know if I can do this any longer. 
You know, so again, the, what these coaches are faced with today is it's, it's a massive undertaking. Right. They're, they're playing right. the role of, of mom or dad very yeah. often yeah. In, in these schools. And it's, you know, to be able to do that well and to have understand that their first ministry is going to be at home yeah. uh, and, and to, you know, still be able to handle the, the excellence mm -hmm. that the schools want them to coach with. I mean, they're difficult things. Well, they're trying to build character and they're trying to build a hard work ethic and all these things that we are to do, you know, but, but then you to put Christ on top of that. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and that's what we find. I mean, coaches, they get to that point where they, I, I, I genuinely think that some of the coaches that we meet, you, you can make movies out. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. when you hear what they are doing on a daily basis, mm -hmm. um, driving kids to school in the morning, you know, tutoring them, mm -hmm. buying them food, right. uh, clothing right. them. Some coaches have kids living with them. Yeah. You, you know, when, when you see that, um, there, there's just those times in life where if that coach does not know Christ, they, they can only get to a certain point with that kid. And, and they feel that. You know where they're going. I I love this kid and I want to help them, but I, I just don't know what the what the answer is mm -hmm. for. Them. You know, so the joy that it is to come around those types of coaches and to work with them and be able to go, hey coach, we we know the answer that that kid needs. We know the answer that you need as a coach that we all need, and it's it's Jesus Christ. Right. Like when you see a coach get that and the lights go off and they go, I have the answer that that best serves these kids. Now it's it's an amazing joy. To Wow. Uh, slogan we went by it was uh, the game honors toughness um, and I, I love that because there's times where you're like I just don't know if I can do it you yeah. know and mm -hmm. uh, that yeah there's gonna be a point where we all have brokenness or something happens and you just you just trying to just get through it you know and that's tough you know but but then Christ comes alongside you and he just helps you get through that that much more you know it's the game does honor toughness, you know, and it, the, the ability to just say, I'm not going to give up. Yeah, that, that's right. And, yeah, yeah. And, and you think about Christians, because this is kind of a little bit of a, I, I think, a struggle. Like, mm -hmm. the, the whole toughness and sports thing yeah. and, and Christianity thing, yeah. like, we, we've worked with student-athletes before that maybe don't quite understand what you just said there. Right. And, 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 and resilience and perseverance and everything that goes with it. They, they don't understand that you can't really understand resilience. Right. You can't understand perseverance outside of Christ. In fact, you know, we, we it's, it's really a great Christian dilemma for Christian athletes. It's, you know, as they are contemplating knowing Christ, contemplating what it looks like to go through those tough times in school. You know, honestly, there's there's quite a few players out there that go, no, if I can uh, be tough enough in the context of a Christian to be able to even continue on in my sports. But, but um, you know, just the, the disconnect to go that sometimes the, the Christian athlete, they, they need to be the toughest people. Yeah. They need to set the example of what it exactly. looks like yep. to, to yep. be able to max out for the glory Amen. of God. Nicely said. Nicely said. Um, with FCA, I can tell you, and, and Brian especially, is uh, the way they represent themselves, the way they represent Christ. Uh, every time I see Brian, he's always got a smile on, on his face, and he's, uh, you see first his tall height, you know, and then, then you see his personality, but then what you see is just uh, a radiating, radiating love, you know, love for community, love for people, love for the Bible, love for God. And you reflect that well. So I just encourage you, uh, FCA is one of those ministries that I can absolutely get behind. It's just, um, it's community focused, you know, and it, it is making a difference. So uh, how can people get connected to FCA and how can they help you go further? Yeah, you know, uh, the best way is just to visit our website at NebraskaFCA.org okay. or they can call into the office because um, the, the, one of the, the beauties and distinctives of FCA, it's, it's very much so a volunteer-based ministry. Right. We, we have staff, and we need more staff. Yeah. That, that's always a big need uh, within the ministry. We feel like where the light, right leaders are, the right stuff happens. Right. So that's something we always want to build towards. So maybe there's someone watching that's going, I'd, I'd like to talk about that. But right. the distinctive of being a volunteer um, intensive ministry, is, it's, it's been a cool thing to watch because 
you know, really what FCA becomes at that point is it becomes a vehicle to empower the church to go. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so people yeah. sit in the pews on Sundays. Is that, oh, I think so, I think so. so they, they have to hoop and shake. And so <laughs> He's excited. That's, that's, yeah, I'm, excited to, I'm excited for him. He that. knows that yeah. sound. I, I do not know that sound very well. I, I usually know that sound like this. <laughs> As one of those guys is about ready to dunk on you. But, uh... Yeah, so the derails. That's, that's kind of that's another trait of me. Yeah, right, far. right. It's, it's all good. It's the squirrel there. So, um, you know, the volunteer um, intensive ministry part. Yeah. People sit in the pews on Sunday mornings and they're they're hearing preach the Great Commission to, to go. Right. You know, but I I know a lot of people that struggle with okay, I want to go. I've got this desire to go and make disciples. Yes. Preach the gospel, yeah. but I don't really know how. Mm -hmm. You know, and certainly uh, it could be as simple as walking outside and you know crossing the street and going and oh, talking to, to your neighbors right. like there's many ways right. we can go absolutely but but fca is one of those ways okay. and and we have a volunteer system called a coaches support team uh, and it's really based around events that fca does uh, it's based around our, our programs of what, what we call huddles which is uh, just groups of kids that are are meeting in schools the groups are led by coaches um, and, and, and it's really based around coming around the coach sometimes for the one-on-one -on -one discipleship to the coach or, or just to be hands and feet to that right. coach who the coach is going and I got to pick all these kids up from, for practice right. or we've got a pregame meal and yeah. the coach is left yeah. with trying to figure out how to do that you know sometimes that's a great place you know in one of those three areas for Christians to, to just enter into the life of a coach mm -hmm. you know kind of adopt a team and just go I'm, I'm going to make disciples in this right. area right here and sometimes you know since it's you know it, if it's based around the club sport that maybe even someone listening their own kids play on or mm -hmm. if it's at one of the local schools like we we want to we want to send people to where they're passionate about mm -hmm. and fca is broad enough where um you know there's lots of lots of communities that we can really launch people right wow um I do want to mention that uh, FCA, they have some dinners coming up in the near future, some um, some fundraising efforts, and even golf. So if you're a big golfer <laughs> like this guy right here, uh, if I'm in there, uh, you have to duck all the time. Uh, my last charity golf event, I almost hit a pastor. So, yeah. so I, <laughs> he, he almost saw his last uh, day. Hey, you know what? He, maybe he, he's ready probably. Yeah. Right so, <laughs> he's ready to go see Jesus. Yeah. It's amazing how God steps in at the yeah, right moment. <laughs> off your golf ball there. Yeah. And just to clarify, I'm not an amazing golfer, as you were saying. <laughs> um, as we finish up, what is a verse that God puts on your heart, um, either now or just as you go forward doing this ministry? Yeah, you know, I feel like that's a ever-changing one. Absolutely, you know, like, yeah. It's, uh, you know, as, as you, um, you know, prayerfully, people are in the habit of, of mm -hmm. spending time in God's Word. You feel like God's always, always hitting you with new new truths, but one that has always been, one that has just stuck with me is Romans 8, 1. You know, it just talks about how there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And, and you just think about that is such good news. That's such good news for these guys playing ball down there, for every house in this neighborhood, but it's such good news for me. And, and I know that um, as I start my day, one of the one of the greatest practices that I've found is I need to take a verse like that. Right. And I need to preach it right. to myself every day. Yep. You know, I need to remind my, myself, my own heart, of the good news of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. uh, of my rebellion against God, right. you know, through sin. Um, there's, there's just so many things that uh, the more we dwell on, on God's word, mm -hmm. Just, just the more it just drives us to worship of God. Amen. So that that is one of those verses that God continues to use. Before uh, Brian got here, uh, I asked one of the guys, I'm like, "Hey, who are you big fan of?" You know, and he said, "Create." I'm like, "Make sure you tell Brian that." <laughs> I live in Omaha. I'm, I'm, I understand. There's more, more Blue Jays. These other guys that came in, uh, you know, same question, and uh, it's a way of just how can we relate? You know, how can yeah. you connect? Uh, you had Nebraska. You had you didn't have Nebraska fan. Oh, uh, <laughs> Nebraska, Creighton. Is it the only one? Yeah. Maybe the only one. Right, right. 
Uh, Nebraska, Creighton, Marquette, and a couple others. And uh, you know what's really cool about that is God has put in my heart uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 12, for just as the body is one, it has many members. Although many, they are one, so it is with Christ. And when you watch these guys, you have guys of different teams and sports they root for, but they're on the same court playing, they're united as one. And as a body of Christ, different churches, different high school rivalries, in the end, we're all part of the same body. So that's that's really cool to see. Cool, that's great. So I love the picture of unity. I think the enemy, uh, one of his biggest tools that he uses is division. He tries Absolutely. to get in amongst us as people and mm -hmm. divide us. And, Sometimes it may be over, maybe we divide over an issue that we should divide right, over. Right. Um, but then a lot of times it's it's the small stuff that mm -hmm. keep people from being together and it's a sad deal. Absolutely. Well, I'm just going to finish up in prayer and then he can, he, I, he's like licking his chops. Like, I just got to go get one shot in, one block yeah, shot. Well, so before, before you pray, I've made a, a uh, I've made a, a bad mistake because <laughs> any, any true baller out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah always has their shorts and they have their shoes in the trunk. <laughs> right. And right. I am saying a basketball court and always prepared. And khaki pants and no basketball shoes. And so, business shoes. Yeah, so I'm, I'm definitely not going down there to play basketball. Well, you got to show them the business with yeah, the business shoes. Yeah, you that's know, you right. Gotta... <laughs> So, Father, we just thank you for today and this, this opportunity to share how good you are and this message of hope, message of um, just having Jesus come here for our sins. And uh, how amazing is that? Uh, Lord, we just want to pray for the uh, ministry, uh, fellowship of Christian athletes, Brian, Ryan, everyone that's a part of that ministry, Lord. Give them the uh, strength to keep going after it. Open up more doors for them and just protect them and their families. And uh, um just guide their paths for them, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all for tuning in. We'll see you next time. God bless.